We have seen how we can compute the diagonalization of a matrix in theory, but what steps do we need to take in practice? In this video, we will look into that problem. We will see how we can find a diagonalization for a given matrix A. We have a given a matrix A. The question is, find a diagonalization of A if this is possible. So, can we find matrices P and D such that A equals P times D times P inverse? What do we need to do? Well, we know the matrix D has the eigenvalues of A on its diagonal, so let's start with computing the characteristic polynomial of A in order to compute the eigenvalues of A. So, P lambda equals the determinant of A minus lambda times the identity matrix, so determinant where you add minus lambdas over here and over there on the diagonal. The determinant of this, ma uh, this uh, matrix over here equals 1 minus lambda times 4 minus lambda minus 4 over here. We work out the brackets. We get the 4 minus lambda minus 4 lambda over there, plus lambda squared minus 4. And you'll see that plus 4 and uh, oh, minus 4 are nicely cancelling out. We have a minus 5 lambda plus lambda squared. So there we have the characteristic polynomial. Uh, in order to find the eigenvalues, we have to set the characteristic polynomial to zero. So we get the characteristic equation over here. You can factor out a factor minus lambda. So we find minus lambda times 5 minus lambda equals zero. So this is zero if either lambda equals zero or if lambda equals 5. So the eigenvalues are lambda 1 equals 0, lambda 2 equals 5. Or you just reverse the order, that doesn't matter. That's step 1. Now we have an idea how the D matrix should, should look. But what about the P matrix? Well, for P, we need the eigenvectors of A. So how again do we find eigenvectors? Well, we start out with lambda 1. And we know that we have an eigenvector if a minus lambda 1 times the identity matrix times the eigenvector equals the zero vector. So we compute A minus lambda 1 times the identity matrix. Well, since lambda 1 equals zero, that's of course just A. So we have this matrix times V equals zero. Well, it's an equation of the form A equals B. So we know how to solve it. Make the augmented matrix A is augmented with B, which is in this case the zero vector. So here we have this augmented matrix, and you'll see that it's really easy to do the row reduction, only one step, minus two over there. And we have our reduced echelon form already, and we see that we have a free variable. We can take, for example, C2 to be free, and C1 equals minus two times C2. Well, how do we find an eigenvector? We have to make the parametric vector form of the solution, so C1, C2 equals C1 equals minus 2C2, so let's place it over here. And C2 is free, so it stays there. You can take this C2 out. So C2 times minus 2, 1. Well, any solution of this problem, this matrix times factor equals zero factor, is of this form over here. So any multiple of minus 2, 1 is an eigenvector of A with eigenvector 0. Or any, almost any, you cannot take. C2 equals zero because a zero vector is never an eigenvector. So we take, for example, C2 equal to one, and we find our first eigenvector minus two, one. First eigenvector. Second eigenvector. We just just do the same computation here, but now for lambda two equals five. So we compute a minus five times the identity matrix. So we subtract five from the diagonal. So we get a minus 4 and a minus 1 over there. Twos stay on the same spot. This matrix times V2 was a zero vector. Make again the augmented matrix. And let's see. Uh, add first row one half times to the second row, and we get a zero row and a free variable. Well, in this stage, you should get free variables. Because if you wouldn't get free variables, you would only find a trivial solution, which would lead to v equals zero. But v equals zero cannot be an eigenvector. So if you have no free variables over here, you have no eigenvectors, but that means that your eigenvalues are wrong. 
So if you find here only the trivial solution, go back, you did something wrong before. So this is a nice check on your earlier computations. But we find three variables, so it's fine. Uh, and we know uh, uh, 4 times C1 uh, plus 2 times equals 2 times C2, over there. Uh, put it in a parametric vector form, C2 in the second spot, and C1 equals 1 half C2, take out the C2. And the factors V2 are of the form multiples of 1 half 1. And I don't like fractions, so if I choose can choose A C2, I would choose myself C2 equals 2, because then you get rid of the fraction of a hair. So we have, for example, V2 equals 1, 2. And then we're there, a diagonalization of A is possible. A equals P D P inverse, which is D. Eigenvalue 0 and 5 on the diagonal. And you put the corresponding eigenvectors, so the eigenvector corresponding to 0 as first column, and the eigenvector cor corresponding to 5 as the second column. And you can check, of course, that P is invertible because the determinant is non-zero. So this is how you can find a diagonalization of a matrix A. You see, it's quite a lot of work because you have to find all eigenvalues, you have to find all eigenvectors, but once you have them, then you're done.